You now have two bookcases that are sitting empty. You're going to populate these shelves with jars using instancing. You will start by pulling the shelves into the geometry level where you will scatter points. This provides a very efficient workflow for dealing with many similar objects. You will also add some variation to the size and orientation of the jars. So we're going to start by going into the network here and we're going to go tab instancer. We're going to place that down and feed this in. It's an error right now and I've set the display flag. It sort of breaks everything for now, but we're going to fix that. Now we're going to set the primitive path to slash geo slash bookcase jars. So in this case here, we're not pulling the name from here. We're actually setting it explicitly here. That way this can still say instancer in case we need to find it later. So let's double click to dive into this. And by default, uh, I think this will be ghosted and you'll be able to see uh, the, all the objects, even though they're not there. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to hide it. So that way we know we brought things in properly. We're going to go tab, lock, import, press this down. So we need to go the lock path. So we're going to click on this here, which allows us to use bookshelf one, except, and then we're going to find the actual primitives because you see nothing showing up yet. And we're going to go and bookshelf one. Now, if we go here, um, I don't think we're going to see the polygons on that yet. What we want to do is we want to make sure we use the render, which is the higher quality version of that shelf for this particular task. So we're not using the proxy version here. We're going to use the render version. Now we're going to take this node and we're going to alt drag over and we're basically going to change the ones for twos. Then we're going to put a merge node down, feed the two of these into there, and set the display flag, and now we have our two shelves. Now, as I said earlier, we couldn't, we can't really see the topology of this. That's because if we middle click on here, you'll see there's only two points, and and these are being instanced in. We are, when you set things up as USD, they're packed. And so we need to unpack this. So we're going to unpack USD to polygons. So we're going to take that, bring that in, and as soon as we do that, we'll see that now we see the topology on there as well as the UVs uh, that we couldn't see before. So that's that's important if we want to do uh, that. Now we're going to add a, a group node into here. Set the display flag, and there we go. Now currently it's it's getting everything, but what we want to do is we want to double click on each of these shelves. And the reason for that is um, we're only going to put jars on here and we don't want to accidentally put jars sort of on the top of there. So we're going to find the top surface of these shelves and use those. So that's enter and that's placed into there. Then we're going to go keep by normals and we're going to go one zero so zero one zero and thirty so as you can see what that does is that picks up the top shelf of each of that of those that's perfect um let's change the name of that to shelves okay now what we want to do we're going to go tab group Band. and when we plug that in but currently this expands it which is not what we want we want to set the this to minus two and we want to use it from the group shelves so the base starts from shelves and as you can see there's the top of the shelf. Now we've inset it. And the reason we've inset it is we don't want jars sitting at the edge of the shelf. We want them to be sitting in the middle of the shelf a little bit more. So this does that for us. And we're going to change the group name to shelf inset. 
Okay. So let's add a tab blast node. We're going to put that right here, set the display flag. And we're going to go in here and choose shelf inset. Now currently it deleted shelf inset and we want to delete non-selected. So there we go. We've now got the tops of the shelves, but inset a little bit uh, for us to add points to. The next node we need here is a scatter node. We're going to put that and plug that in and that will add a whole bunch of points in here. We're going to do a count of 120 for now just to get started. Uh, we can crank that up later if we need to. So if we go back to the stage level, that's still not working because we we don't have anything plugged into instance. So we're going to go tab stage manager. Okay, now this node actually gives us access to the catalog here. And what it allows us to do is we're going to go here and we're going to add a plus sign. And we're going to call this jars. Now we've got the asset catalog here. So we want to shift select. And let's, let's bring this down to do this. All the jars. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to take all of those and we're going to drag those as children of there. Uh, that didn't quite work. There we go. So we've got all those jars sitting under this jar here. Let's go shift F1 so we can hide that. Okay, so let's bring that back up so we can see the network. Okay, so what we need to do now is after the stage manager, we're going to put down a collection node. We're going to put that here. Set the display flag on that for now. We're going to call the collection name jars. And what we want to do for the primitives is just go slash jars slash and then star. Okay, so that finds all of our jars. Plug this into the instancer in the second input and click on there. Now, in order for this to work, we need to point to this. So this is geo bookcase jars, so that's fine. And the prototype primitive is going to be set out to say this jars, so collection jars. And there we go. So now we have a whole bunch of things on the shelves. Now if we want to focus on the shelves right now, one of the things we can do is we can set the display on the ground, the table, and the tent and just hide them so we can just think about shelves at the moment. And there we go. And we probably want to, let's just look at final render there so we see how that's looking as a final render. Now let's keep this pin this so we st this view stays up at the stage level. And we're going to go back down into the instancer. And we're going to take the force count that we did before and go 240. And that cranks up the number um, that we have there. So that looks pretty good. And if you want to, you can play around with the global seed to just try out different, different looks until you get one that you like. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go tab uh, randomize, so attribute randomize. And we're going to plug that in. And by default, it does color. What we want to do is we're going to put it between the blast and the scatter. So we want to put it there before the scatter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and change the name to P scale. Now you see we got a whole bunch of jars, a whole bunch of different sizes. And what we probably want to do is go 0 0.8, 1 1.2. Oh, and we want to put 1.2 in here. So now that, that sort of gives us a nice range of jars, different sizes and so on um, that work well. And then if we want to 
alt drag this to create a second one. Uh, this one we're going to change the name to Orient. So these are names that mean something in Houdini. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to set the number of attributes to four, or the number of dimensions to four. And as you can see, it gets it's all over the place uh, because it's orienting in all three directions. So what you want to do is you want to change this to zero, 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 zero. And as you can see, it's still a bit crazy. And then we're going to go zero tab sixty tab zero tab one okay so now and if you played around with this and said 30 you'd see it'd be a little bit different or but we'll go back to 60. so that creates and you can see there's different orientations in there so that just adds a little bit of believability uh, into that now we can go back to the scatter node let's set the display on there and what we want to do is maybe relax the iterations down a little bit um, or go up a little bit you know you can play around with that to see whether you get what you want okay and once you get all of that set up you can again play with the global seed to say okay well which of these is sort of looking good to me okay that's that's got a nice variation in there and that's sort of doing what I need so once you've got that, you can go back to the stage level. So this is nicely plugged into there, and you have that. Now let's go back to the instancer node, and we're going to turn back the table, the tent, and everything. And we can now look at that all together as a group. And there we go. Now, as we move forward, uh, it might make sense to change this back to preview with guides, just so that Again, things might be a little bit quicker. And if you wanted to, um, you could hide the, if you find them distracting or they're slowing you down, the jars could be hidden. We can bring them back later, um, or we can continue to work with them. That's a choice. Uh, you can go either way. So there we go. We've been able to take a couple bookshelves from the USD, pull them into the geometry level within the instancer, work with them, and then use that to scatter points and set up the jars. Okay, thanks a lot.